Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and welcome back to part two of Zane Explained. This time around, we'll be covering two more distinct categories of the cyber style. First, we'll be covering various cyber monsters that don't really fit under the dragon category, a section I'm affectionately calling the Chancellor Shepherd portion, and ending things off with the Cyber Arch Reverse, the dark side of the style that seeks to grow and improve in power, even at the cost of one's own health. Let's get started. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons, as well as the wonderful people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. First off, there are a lot of cyber cards in the game, some of which are named as such by the TCG, but aren't necessarily meant to be part of the group. These include Cyber Falcon, Cyber Saurus, Cyber Soldier of Darkness, Cyber Stein, and Cyber Tech Alligator. We're also not covering anything that's part of another established archetype like Cyber Angels, and I'm certainly not adding in Cybers. But outside those guidelines, I'm covering all the rest, cause I'm a goofy little guy. Cyber Larva is a level 1 light machine monster with 400 attack and 600 defense, and if this card is targeted for an attack, you take no battle damage for the rest of the turn. And when this card is destroyed by battle, you can special summon a Cyber Larva from your deck. But keep in mind that the new Larvas can be run over like any other card, you just won't take any damage from it. This is a kind of interesting trade-off, because your opponent will want to run through as many of them as possible so you don't have any left over for the next turn, but that just fills your grave with more material for cards like Overload Fusion. But if you've already got the upper hand, a few extra grave material from a card that does nothing by itself isn't exactly terrifying. Give it a few years, let it grow up to at least a Cyber Cocoon, then we'll reevaluate. Cyber Pharos is a level 1 light machine monster with 0 attack and 2100 defense, and you can special summon this card from your hand by tributing a machine monster. Once per turn, during your main phase, you can fusion summon a machine fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand and or field as material. And when a fusion monster you control is destroyed by battle, you can banish this card from your grave to add a power bond from your deck to your hand. So it's an extra fusion effect you can get into rotation by attributing a spare machine, and then if the fusion you make gets destroyed by battle, you get a power bond. But as I've said many times before, having to be destroyed by battle is a rough condition. I think the idea is that you use this to make Cyber Eternity Dragon, which itself has a number of protections, one of which is not battle, so you can use this to grab the power bond to work with the Cyber Dragon that Eternity will float into. Now, we casually discussed power bond in last episode's tech pick section, but now that it's specifically being being name dropped, let's do some more formal coverage. Power Bond is a normal spell card that fusion summons any machine fusion monster from your extra deck, using cards from your hand or field as material, and it gains attack equal to its original attack. And during the end phase of the turn this card is activated, you take damage equal to the amount of attack gained from this effect at the time of the summon. It is a very powerful spell that can take your fusions from battle threats to terrifying engines of destruction, and while a little risky, is more than worth the effort to use it. But since Power Bond is so closely tied to Zane and Cyrus, this has a greater connection to the boys than most of our other cyber cards. And that may be because Pharos is meant to be the lighthouse that Zane frequents in the show. I always wondered what in the heck this card was, so I'm glad that this research illuminated the subject. Cyber Valley is a level 1 light machine monster with 0 attack and defense, and when this card is targeted for an attack by an opponent's monster, you can banish this card to draw a card, then end the battle phase. You can also target a face-up monster you control and this card, banish that target and this card, then draw two cards, or you can target a card in your grave to banish both this card and a card in your hand, then place that target on the top of the deck. Now, this all seems pretty underwhelming. It's very susceptible to removal, so its battle phase skipping effect can be played around, and its other effects seem very inefficient. But back in the day, this card was worth its weight in gold. Blanking the battle phase while going net neutral in card advantage was a great way to build up your resources, while the opponent was left not making any progress. The other effects let you trade in cards that weren't doing anything for lots of draws, or recurring a powerful card, and while it was legal, was useful with one in particular. Dimension Fusion. With spell economics on the board, making Dimension Fusion cost nothing, three copies of Cyber Valley was actually able to loop this over and over again, letting you draw out your entire deck. You basically summon all three with Dimension Fusion, then use one to banish itself and a card in hand to put Dimension Fusion from your grave back on top of your deck. Then, use the second Cyber Valley to banish the third to draw two, getting back your Dimension Fusion and a fresh card. 
then play that Dimension Fusion, getting all the valleys back, and with that spare card, you can get the Dimension Fusion back with one valley and do the whole loop over again. Combine this with anything that gets you value in being banished or when special summoned, and you can loop these on and off the field by banishing specific cards in sequence. But with Dimension Fusion now banned, and honestly good riddance, and power creep in general, this doesn't really accomplish anything. But that's the interesting relationship this game has with time. Cards will always have their peaks and valleys. Cyber Ouroboros is a level 2 Dark Machine monster with 100 attack and 600 defense, and when this card is removed from play, you can send a card from your hand to the grave to draw a card. So it wants us to use it for one of our fusion effects that banish, and for that, we get to rummage. It's goofy, but not particularly impactful, especially without any kind of infrastructure to really take advantage of. Like, some kind of card that, when discarded, adds itself and a banished dark monster to your hand, then banishes a card from your hand, because at that point you could banish the Ouroboros to discard a card, to draw a card, then when discarded adds itself in a banished dark monster to your hand, then banishes a card from your hand, because at that point you can banish the Ouroboros to discard a card, to draw a card. Cyber Kirin is a level 3 light machine monster with 300 attack and 800 defense, and you can tribute this card to make any effect damage you take this turn become zero, which sounds very situational, and honestly, it kinda is, but if you're playing Power Bond, this actually keeps you from taking that big chunk of damage. It's actually how it was used in the anime, as it turns out. It's something to keep in mind just in case there's a format where effect damage happens on your own turn, but outside that, I think you really should just take the Power Bond damage on the chin. Besides, I don't really feel comfortable tributing a monster like this, uh, look at it, it's just a cute little guy! Cyber Archfiend is a level 4 Dark Fiend monster with 1000 attack and 2000 defense, and at the beginning of your draw phase, if you have no cards in your hand, you draw an additional card. And during your end phase, if you have one or more cards in your hand, destroy this card. I'm not sure how this fits into the whole Cyber archetype, but it is very much an Archfiend card. The focus on having no cards in your hand kind of fits their modus operandi, at least insofar as getting a boon for fulfilling some kind of odd condition, and punishing you if you don't. It's like a fiendish pack in a way, and you just made one with a fiend that hates hand traps. Good luck! Cyber Esper is a level 4 fire machine monster with 1200 attack and 1800 defense, and while this card is in face up attack position, you can look at every card your opponent draws. That's a funny effect, but not super helpful. Unless your opponent is down to zero cards, you aren't getting a full picture of what the opponent is doing, and if you're only looking at draws on their turn, there's not much you can really do about it. And that's pretty disappointing. I was led to believe that Espers were these beings of boundless powers, Eidolons whose energies reached beyond the mortal realms. If Espers are this weak, then no wonder Kefka won Final Fantasy VI. Cyber Phoenix is a level 4 fire machine monster with 1200 attack and 1600 defense, and while this card is in attack position, negate any spell or trap effect that targets a machine monster you control and no other cards. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can draw a card. Now, it does provide only a very specific kind of protection, but there are a lot of cards that fall under this. Book of Moon, the forbidden quick play spells, infinite impermanence, all that jazz. Floating into a draw isn't bad either, so if we can pair this with an attack redirector that can summon this out for free, we've actually got something bordering on playable. And I mean, between this and Esper, I feel like we're really getting into a fire machines with bad attacks that only work while in attack position theme going on here. Cyber Raider is a level 4 dark machine monster with 1400 attack and 1000 defense, and if this card is summoned, you can activate one of these effects. You can either take an equip card on the field and destroy it, or target an equip card on the field and equip it to this card. This is one of our cards that doesn't really have anything to do with our usual game plan, having been played initially by Esperoba. And it's not their only cyber monster showing up alongside the Fiend Mega Cyber, but we already did the whole Jinzo episode, so we're taking a pass on that. You'll more likely than not be using the removal effect, because most good equip spells are pretty specific, so if Dark Machine Cyber Monsters ever become searchable in a format where getting rid of equip spells is paramount, I look forward to adding you as a silly tech pick in the future as a Raider Boss. Cybernetic Cyclopean is a level 4 Earth Beast Warrior monster with 1400 attack and 200 defense, and if you have no cards in your hand, this card gains 1000 attack, putting it at an astounding 2400. That's pretty big! It's also the second cyber monster that benefits from having no cards in hand. I'm starting to think there might be another emergent theme showing up here. Looking forward to the time this becomes a viable search off of Tenki as a normal summonable answer to big monsters. For now, 
I'm stuck wondering if this is a retrain of Hitatsu Mi Giant. And if so, are we going to get more retrains like this of other Kaiba monsters? I'd love to see what Cybernetic Sword Stalker is all about. Cyber Ogre is a level 5 Earth Machine monster with 1900 attack and 1200 defense, and as a quick effect, you can discard this card to negate a battle involving a Cyber Ogre on your side of the field, and it gains 2000 attack until the end of its next battle. It's so strange, but at least the boost lasts until its next battle, not at the end of that battle phase, so you'll at least have 3900 attack to work with on the crackback. It even has a card made specifically to summon this so you don't have to use a tribute. By Road Sacrifice is a normal trap card that, if a monster you control is destroyed by battle, you can special summon a Cyber Ogre from your hand. It's so out there because this art is outrageous and it's stuck on this thing. Honestly, if you're even going to bother considering playing this card at all, you better run Polymerization 2 so you can get this, summon its fusion monster. Cyber Ogre 2 is a level 7 Earth Machine Fusion monster with 2600 attack and 1900 defense, requiring two Cyber Ogres as material. A fusion summon of this card has to be conducted with the above fusion material, and if this card attacks, it gains half the attack of the attack target during damage calculation only. That's right, it's got the Metal Morph effect! It's actually pretty strong, we see something similar to this with Boral Sword Dragon, though that monster actually steals the attack, whereas Cyber Ogre 2 just gains it. It'll still be big, but it's just not the same. Nor is it anywhere near as accessible. Cyber Ogre is a strange card because it's got just enough investment to give us reason to believe that there could be another wave of support to appeal to the Chancellor Shepherd crowd, and honestly, I I'm one of those people. Give me more cards like By Road Sacrifice, I need to know how the heck all this ties together! Cybernetic Magician is a level 6 light spellcaster monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense. Ooh, monarch stats. And you can discard a card to target a face-up monster on the field, and that target's attack becomes 2000 until the end phase. This is actually a really good monster for its format. 2400 attack is really good for a 1 tribute monster, and has an offensive effect that can be used in two important ways. One is to make your smaller monsters big, but this can also be used to make your opponent's bigger monsters smaller. If your opponent has a 3 3k monster, you can have Psy Magician shrink him to 2k, and now you can just run it over. And it's also not once per turn, so as long as you have cards to discard, you can keep making changes. In fact, this means it's a... another cybernetic card that incentivizes you to empty out your hand. Devs, is there something you're not telling me? Cyber Dinosaur is a level 7 light machine monster with 2500 attack and 1900 defense. When your opponent special summons a monster from their hand, you can special summon this card from your hand. Which is a big departure from the manga where a bit villain has this as an actual dinosaur monster that's summonable off of double evolution pill of all things. This is kind of a goofy counter to Cyber Dragon actually, because its summon condition is exactly the kind of thing that Dino is looking for. Which is also completely different from how it works in the manga. This thing is supposed to be able to attack directly. What kind of shoddy translation are they doing here? Cyber Eltanen is a level 10 light machine monster with question mark attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned from your hand by banishing all light machine monsters from your field and grave. This card's attack and defense become the number of monsters banished for its special summon times 500, and if this card is special summoned, send all other phase up monsters on the field to the grave. This includes your own, but since you're banishing all your light machines anyway, it'll more than likely only hit your opponent's board. And thankfully, this sends, it doesn't destroy so it's a very thorough piece of removal, and it can potentially get really big. Banishing 4 puts it at a respectable 2k, 6 gets it to 3k, and anything higher than that is going to get ugly. And everything you banish is now valid fusion material to use with Cyberload Fusion. This is honestly a pretty solid tech card to have in your back pocket, especially since it's searchable by Cyber Emergency. Now, the real question is, is this monster more Gundam coded because of the bits, or more Gradius coded because of the big ship boss vibes going on here? Cyber Shadow Garden is a continuous trap card, and during your opponent's main phase, you can special summon this card as an effect monster, which will be a level 4 Earth Machine monster that's also still a trap card. It's got question mark attack and defense, because when an opponent's monster declares an attack that targets this card, Cyber Shadow Garden changes its attack and defense to match the attack and defense of the attacking monster. And once per turn, during your opponent's end phase, set this card in its owner's spell and trap zone. This is basically a combat deterrent. If they attack, it's gonna crash with whatever it fights. 
hits, and if the attacker has a stronger defense, this will just absorb the blow. But wow, is this ineffectual. It's a very niche answer, getting rid of things that would otherwise be protected by targeting effects or destruction, but then your opponent has to run into this of their own volition. And if they have enough monsters, they can just choose to trade a smaller one in to get through. It doesn't even stay on the field to be used as material for another summon for crying out loud. This has some utility in trap monster decks in combination with something like Imperial Custom, but that's about it. Honestly, all this is doing is making me more confused about how the Gardener archetype is supposed to shake out. I'm starting to think it doesn't have a cohesive design. Cyber Summon Blaster is a continuous trap card, and each time any number of machine monsters are special summoned while this card is already phased up in the spell and trap zone, burn your opponent for 300 damage. It's not once per turn, so if you get a big summon turn set up, you can actually deal a hefty chunk of damage so your offense doesn't have to be as beefed up to close out the game. If this was a continuous spell card and did anything helpful, this might see a lot of play actually, and I'd love to see what happens after you flip three of these and really shred your opponent's life points. But until then, I can't really recommend Blaster. I mean, I hardly know her! Alright, now that I've finished shepherding this flock, it's time to cover Cyberdark Style, a series of dark monsters that are either machine or dragon type. To start, we're going to cover these initial cards all at once as they all tie together pretty closely. And all the future support is made specifically to bring these cards up to modern standards. And they have a lot of work to do. Let's just say these didn't exactly get the warm reception that Cyber Dragons did. Cyber Dark Edge? Horn and Keel are all level 4 machine monsters with 800 attack and defense, and when normal summoned, targets a level 3 or lower dragon monster in your grave and equips that monster to this card, gaining attack equal to the original attack of the monster equipped by this effect. And if they would be destroyed by battle, the equipped monster gets destroyed instead. And each one comes with their own unique effect. Edge can attack directly, but deals half damage when doing so using that effect. Horn deals piercing battle damage, and Keel burns the opponent for 300 damage when it destroys the monster by battle. Now, you'll notice that all of these effects, uh, suck. Granted, they can get pretty big with the right graveyard setup. A popular level 3 dragon to run was Hunter Dragon, who clocks in at a gnarly 1700, so these normal summons hit board at 2500, which does demand an answer. But you needed to have the grave set up first, they have little meaningful protection, and with these effects, they're little more than big vanillas. To say nothing of the fact that they were adding dragons to an otherwise machine deck, and guess which two types share very little synergy? But these are all meant to be pieces of a whole puzzle, tied together by the spell card Cyber Dark Impact, which, yes, is the same name as a core set. Yay. It takes one copy of Edge, Horn, and Keel from among your cards, Grave, and Face Up Field, shuffles them into the deck, and Fusion summons Cyber Dark Dragon, a level 8 Dark Machine Fusion monster with a thousand attack and defense that must be Fusion Summoned. If this card is special summoned, you target a dragon monster in your grave and equip that target to this card, and it gains attack equal to the original attack of the monster equipped by this effect, and an additional 100 attack for each monster in your grave. And if this card would be destroyed by battle, you destroy the equipped monster instead. This reads a lot like our component monsters, but the notable part is that the level limit of the dragon we can equip has been lifted. So you'll also have to run big dragons to make the most of this. So I guess get used to playing some blue eyes cards here too. But that's really all this card is supposed to be, a huge beat stick. An impressive one with a cool lead up, but its legacy doesn't mean much on the battlefield. I mean, it's a machine monster that's taken on the dragon title, you know how I feel about that, that has to absorb other dragons to get anything done. What a poser. So that covers all the initial cards, let's take a look at how Future Support attempted to update their firmware. Attachment Cyburn is a level 3 light dragon monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, and you can target a dragon or machine cyber monster you control and equip this card from your hand or field to it. While this card is an equipped card, the equipped monster gains 600 attack, and if this card is sent to the grave while equipped to a monster, you can target one other dragon or machine cyber monster in your grave and special summon it. So we attach this to anything from either the cyber or cyber dark line, give them a bit of a boost, and when this goes to the graveyard, we get a monster reborn. But the boost goes doubly well when our cyber darks equip it with their effect, because not only will they gain that 1600 base attack, they'll still get that 600 boost from attachment, making each of our cyber darks a 3000 attack normal summon. And yeah, despite its looks, this is a dragon. It's a pretty neat card that can be recycled with each of our cyber dark normal summons, helping to keep your board stocked up. And look, they even remembered not to make it a wind this time. Technological progress sure is something, huh? 
Cyber Dark Cannon is a level 3 Dark Dragon monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, and if this card is sent to the grave while equipped to a monster, you draw a card. You can discard this card to add a Machine Cyber Dark monster from your deck to your hand, and during damage calculation, if a monster equipped with this card battles, you can send a monster from your deck to the grave. Now this is where they started getting serious about supporting the theme. I mean, it's the perfect synergy, a level 3 dragon that discards itself to search a monster that equips level 3 dragons from the grave. Not only that, it activates a Foolish Burial on attacks, which basically means Edge is the best one to search since it can attack directly, not worrying about what monster it fights, helping to set up your grave even further, with a little draw in case things go sideways. And this isn't the only one they made. Cyber Dark Claw has the same level, type, and attribute as Cannon, and if sent to the grave while equipped to a monster, you can target a Cyber Dark monster in your grave and add it to your hand. By discarding it, you can add a Cyber Dark Speller Trap card from your deck to your hand, and during damage calculation, if a monster equipped with this card battles, you can send a monster from your extra deck to the grave. Now, isn't that something? There's all kinds of extra deck to graveyard tomfoolery you can get up to, but we have some specific ones that I can't wait to get into in just a bit. These two are basically the cornerstones of the deck, and while it doesn't make the original three any more exciting, it does give them some effects actually worth using, while also making sure they hit the board at the 2400 attack mark. It's been a long time coming, but it looks like Cyber Dark Dragon has finally learned its lesson, doing everything it can to claw and scrape itself to this point for a chance to get its shot. Cyber Dark Chimera is a level 4 Dark Machine monster with 800 attack and 2100 defense, and you can discard a spell card to add a power bond from your deck to your hand. By doing this, you can only use Dragon and Machine Cyber monsters as fusion material this turn. But one time this turn, when you fusion summon, you can banish any number of monsters from your grave as material. And if this card is sent to the grave, you can send a Cyber Dark monster from your deck to the grave with a different name from the cards in your grave. This is huge because it essentially adds Overload Fusion's text to Power Bond, but makes it even better because now you can use it to make any machine fusion monster, not just dark ones, helping you to make the most out of this truly fantastic card. Its grave effect is also nifty when it comes to getting more of your cyber dark names into the grave so we can field another big fusion, or to get either Claw or Cannon into the grave so our core members can scoop them up. Heck, you can send this right from deck to grave with Cannon if you're so inclined. And it's also nice to know where all that Chimera tech has been coming from. Honestly, this is the closest thing to a Chimera we've had out of all of them, so I'm glad at least someone understood the assignment. Cyber Darkness Dragon is a level 10 Dark Machine Fusion monster with 2000 attack and defense, requiring 5 Cyber Dark effect monsters as material. It must first be fusion summoned, and if special summoned in any way, you can equip any dragon or machine monster in your grave to this card. It gains attack equal to the original attack of the monster equipped to it by this effect, and when your opponent activates a card or effect as a quick effect, you can send an equipped card you control to the grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Now, if you've played any any current day Yu-Gi-Oh, this text might seem familiar to you. And that's because that last one is an even better version of the Fire Warrior staple, Immortal Phoenix Gearfried. But where that monster is a monster negate, we're an Omni negate. The rest also may seem familiar because this is like a giant upgraded version of the ineffectual Cyber Dark Dragon. It's got a better base stat total, can choose from dragons or machines for the equip, which doesn't target by the way, and of course, there's the negate. Needing two more Cyber Darks is a little more costly, but not only do we have Overload Fusion to help, we have that Cyber Dark Chimera getting us an upgraded Power Bond as well, which itself will guarantee that Cyber Darkness is a base 4k attack. This is a marked improvement over the original, and with our new effects that allow us to throw cards into the bin, it's arguably easier to access as well. And good lord, the new art is awesome. You can just see how the new Cyber Darks have altered the design, with Claw giving heft to its jagged ribcage and cannon readying to fire on some unsuspecting target. I'm sorry, but if this art doesn't hype you up, you've gotta get back in touch with your enthusiasm. Cyber Dark End Dragon is a level 12 Dark Machine Fusion monster with 5,000 attack and 3,800 defense that requires Cyber Dark Dragon and Cyber End Dragon as material, and must either be fusion summoned or special summoned by tributing a level 10 or lower Cyber Dark Fusion monster equipped with Cyber End Dragon. It's unaffected by your opponent's activated effects, and once per turn, you can equip a monster from either grave to this card, and this card can attack a number of times each battle phase, up to the number of equipped cards equipped to it. Here it is, the union of the Cyber Styles two halves, and it does not disappoint. It's a five 
thousand attack towers that can multi-attack, notably not restricted to monsters, and is a surefire way to win the game. The only question is, how do we summon this? I mean, getting out not just one, but two big bosses that have substantial material requirements is abysmal. Thankfully, we're gonna have some spell and trap cards that'll help us out in this regard, so our main focus should just be getting out our Cyber Dark Fusions onto the board, and those spells and traps will handle the rest, cause once you do, it'll be the end of your opponent. Cybernetic Horizon is a normal spell card that's always treated as a Cyber Dark card. You can send two dragon and or machine cyber monsters with different attributes to the grave, one each from your hand and deck, to add a dragon or machine cyber monster from your deck to your hand, and if you do, send a machine cyber fusion monster from your extra deck to the grave. But you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this card, except machine monsters, and this checks before and after you use it. So this is primarily how you're going to get cyber and dragon into the grave while getting all your other pieces in the right place. While you can't control the card you have in hand to send to Graveyard, you can control what you send to Grave from your deck and what to add, and you have some fantastic options for both. The darts you can send include Cannon and Claw, so they'll be ready to be attached since you search one of your base Cyber Dark monsters, but our bread and butter choice is going to be sending Cyber Dark Chimera to the Grave and adding Natchter to hand. Chimera will send another Cyber Dark, and when we summon Natchter, well, it turns out Chimera is a machine monster with 2100 defense, so we can revive it, then use its effect if we have a spare spell or trap in hand to get a souped up power bond. But that all requires us to have a light monster in hand as the discard. Should we have a dark one, we can send hers directly from deck to grave to recycle one of our cyber dragons in grave, or at the very least grab an original one from the deck, and from here you can grab either claw or cannon, whichever one suits the rest of your hand so you can continue to pop off. Though, if I'm being real, the correct answer is almost always claw, since grabbing a spell or trap card means more monster searching. Trust me, we are nowhere close to done with that. Also, uh, can we give it up for the third Cyber Dragon card named for a core set? Talk about committing to the bid. This is ridiculous. Cyber Dark Realm is a continuous spell card that, when activated, lets you add a Cyber Dark monster from your deck to your hand with a different name from the cards in your grave. During your main phase, you can, immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon a Cyber Dark monster. And if you equip a monster from your grave by the effect of a Cyber Dark monster that activated when normal or special summoned, you can equip from your opponent's grave instead. Now sadly, in most cases, that last effect isn't ever gonna be useful. Depending on the format, very few people are gonna be on dragons and machines, least of all ones that are level 3 or lower. And Cyber Dark End, the one with the broadest equipability, already takes from both graves anyway. It's largely just meant to be more of an anime effect because that's how they work in the show, but it's something to keep in mind just in case. Thankfully, the rest of the card is fantastic. Searching any Cyber Dark that hasn't hit the grave yet is awesome, letting you get Claw or Cannon during the early game, as well as Chimera whenever it's convenient. And the extra normal summon means that whatever you search isn't going to conflict with your plans that are already in motion. It also makes the component Cyber Darks look Pretty cute, actually. Like, they're all wrapped up in little digi-eggs waiting for their tamer to come along. Which, considering the later stages, yeah, the whole Digimon Evolution line aesthetic maps onto them pretty well. Cyber Dark Inferno is a field spell card, and all Cyber Dark effect monsters you control that are equipped with an equipped card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, nor can they be targeted by them. You can target a Cyber Dark monster you control, return it to the hand, then immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon a Cyber Dark monster. And if this card in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can add a polymerization spell or fusion spell from your deck to your hand. Unlike Realm, this is not a starter card. Instead, Inferno is here to insulate and protect your plays. Once your Cyber Darks are suited up, they gain some pretty hefty protections, but there is that little point they lack an equip spell, so sneaky quick effects can still make quick work of them. The additional normal summon may seem odd, since if the monster is already on the field, why would you want to bounce it to end up with the same number of monsters? But the trick for that lies in our latest Cyber Darks. Remember how Claw and Cannon both have effects that trigger when sent to the grave while equipped? Well, if you return the monster they're equipped to to the hand for this effect, that gets you that bonus effect, nabbing you a draw or some graveyard recursion. Not to mention that if your base cyber darks ever lose their equips, this gives you a chance to grab a new one. It's a solid card, but you'd much rather find this off of a search than seeing it in your opening hand. Oh, uh, and why does Claw get top billing in this art? It's a team effort, everyone. The powers of evil and darkness need to be bolstered by mutual respect. You all should know this by now. 
Cyber Dark Invasion is a continuous trap card, and once per turn, you can activate one of these effects. You can either target a Cyber Dark effect monster you control to equip a dragon or machine monster from either grave to it as an equip spell that gives it a thousand attack, or send an equip spell card you control equipped to a machine monster to the graveyard to destroy a card your opponent controls. These are both pretty good modes, one helping to gas up your Cyber Darks, which also means more negates for Cyber Darkness Dragon, and the other giving you removal, which will also trigger Claw and Can cannons effects, should you have them as active equips. This falls under the category of cards that you search once you've got your engine online to help keep your plays going, and in this category, it does a fantastic job of keeping you going during the late game. Poor Red Eyes though. First, it has to get played by Atticus now that Joey is taking a break from it with all those new Flame Swordsman cards, and now this. Absolutely tragic. Alright, that's all the Cyber Dark cards, now it's time for more combos! I'm gonna show you how to make Cyber Dark and Dragon with just three cards. One of them is Cyber Core, which can be searched via Cyber Emergency, see the Cyber Dragon video for details, and Cyber Dark Claw. This one you are gonna need to hard draw though, as we're gonna be using our searches for other things, and any spell or trap card. Normal summon the core and pitch the claw, using both effects to get Cyber Dark Realm and Cybernetic Horizon. Play the realm to search cannon, then pitch cannon to grab any of the base Cyber Dark monsters. From here, you play Cybernetic Horizon, pitching the Cyber Dark you just added and a light cyber monster from your deck, hers if you want a free Cyber Dragon, attachment if you want to get tricky later on, and add Cyber Dark Chimera from your deck to your hand, sending Cyber End Dragon from your extra deck to the grave. Using Realm's extra normal summon, get Chimera onto the board, using its effect to pitch that spell or trap card for a power bond. Then, link the Chimera and the core for Seeger, which will trigger Chimera's effect, letting you send any Cyber Dark you don't already have in the grave to there. And wouldn't you know it, that's five Cyber Dark effect monsters in the grave. Play that power bond with the extra bonus effect from Chimera, and make Cyber Darkness Dragon, which will be at a staggering 4,000 attack, going up to 8k with the assistance of that Cyber End Dragon that you'll be equipping with its effect. If you have a clear shot for game, you can just end it right here, but in any other circumstance, you've now fulfilled filled the alternate summoning condition for Cyber Dark and Dragon. From here, you can equip any monster in the graves to it, letting you scoop up any problem monsters you expect your opponent to make use of, but if they don't have anything worth worrying about, then we may have sent a really good equip to the graveyard with Cybernetic Horizon earlier in the combo, Attachment Cyber. Equip it, putting your monster at a stout 5600, and if Attachment Cyber goes to the graveyard, you can summon a free Cyber monster from your grave, a really good one being Cyber Darkness Dragon. Once it's summoned, you can have it equip the attachment again, giving it a cool 2200, bumping it up to 4200 attack, and you've got an Omni Negate and a Towers. Your opponent better have Lava Golem at that point, because otherwise they are cooked. Alright, that's all these Cyber Dark cards, but what do we do with them? Well, this is certainly a theme that's been defined by Legacy support. It still needs its older cards, which can hamper them quite a bit, but they've gotten some unruly cards that give them a pretty substantial boost, so we're gonna have to lean into our new boss monsters something fierce. We'll also call upon the Cyber Dragon support as much as we need, establishing our big threats, and slowly bowling over our opponent with our giant multi-attacking monstrosity. So the remainder of the deck should be focused on gathering our pieces and making sure our opponent can't set up a counter-offensive. So what can we play to help them out? We're gonna need some backup plans in case we get interrupted. No matter how well prepared you are, the odd Imperm or Veiler is gonna hit your Cyber Dark before Inferno can cover it, if you even have it on the field at all. Thankfully, just such a plan B exists in Revolution Synchron. Granted, making Dragon Synchros does conflict with Cybernetic Horizon, but if your plays are interrupted at that point, you probably wouldn't want to activate it anyway. We have a boatload of good level 7 dragons to go into, like Black Rose Dragon for a board wipe, Kui Belt for a bit more focused spot removal, and Shooting Riser Dragon can actually bin another Cyber Dark if you need a little extra help in getting to that 5 monster threshold. Just remember to only send the regular Cyber Darks, as you can't activate any effects of monsters that share a name with the sent one that turn. And with the exception of Riser, we can use Rev Synchron's Grave Effect to give us a level 8 dragon on top of that. Borload Savage is an option if we have a Seeger in Grave giving us some nifty negates and a pretty big attack boost. Buster Dragon ruins just about every type reliant strategy. Crystal Wing is a good all-rounder for monster negation. Scarlight for a situational board wipe, and perhaps the funniest option of them all, Life Stream Dragon. If you made Power Tool Dragon as your level 7, Rev can get us into this immediately, giving us a life point boost if we're under 4k, and keeps us safe from effect damage, letting us safely use Power Bond, which is kind of funky. 
Claw and Cannon may be our new de facto equips for our original Cyber Darks, but what are some other tiny dragons that might make for some fun play sequences? Well, if we wanted to add a synchro twist, Dragoonides are another deck that equips tiny dragons, either to get some bonus effects or to special summon themselves from the spell and trap zone. And with a variety of tuners, you can access a lot of fun stuff. Imagine normal summoning a Cyber Dark, equipping Gwisarm, summoning it, then sinking into Dark Strike Fighter, tributing a Cyber Dark and Dragon for 2400 points of damage out of nowhere. And don't forget Dragoonity Remus, which you can discard to search Dragon Ravine, which can then get you any dragon into your grave. Lang Ling is also a very powerful inclusion. Changing the base attack of the equipped monster to 1000 is supposed to be a drawback, but for us, it's actually a benefit. Combine that with gaining its 1500 attack and you just scored yourself a 2500 attack normal summon that has an unrestricted double attack. Black Metal Dragon can be recycled with this, letting you send it to Grave to keep grabbing you more Red Eyes cards in case Dragoon catches your fancy. Oh, and Dragon Buster Destruction Sword is off the ban list, so yeah, feel free to have fun extra deck locking your opponent, you monster. Since I keep bringing up the gap of time between being and not being equipped in regards to Inferno, do we have anything that can help with that? And because I took the time to outline it, you know the answer is yes. If your opponent tries to destroy your Cyber Dark before the equip happens, flip up unauthorized activation to equip any appropriate machine union from your hand or deck to a target machine you control. And unauthorized boot up device is a welcome choice, protecting from not just battle, but card effect destruction. It can also be used proactively, giving fuel to cards like Cyber Darkness Dragon for a negate in a pinch. While not necessarily a tech pick, it is important to keep in mind just how easily we can pivot between options with this deck. For instance, if your opponent has stopped you from accumulating Cyber Darks in your grave, but we've got the Cyber Dragon core, we can make sure to send a Cyber Dragon to the graveyard with Cybernetic Horizon in that combo mentioned previously, so that our Power Bond summons Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon instead. It'll have that 4200 attack, 3 attacks to perform, and can potentially hop up to 6300 if you give it the Seeger boost. Heck, if worse comes to worse, Seeger can actually be one of the materials for its summon. While it does require jumping through a few hoops, the ABC Union monsters may be able to help us. While they can't be equipped to non-light machine monsters via their own effects, they give their protection to anything they're equipped to regardless. This means Cyber Darkness Dragon can attach them to get their protections, as well as with Cyber Dark Invasion. And, in a pinch, that means you've got a big 3000 attack monster with banishing removal that you can summon. Seems pretty choice to me. As for a silly tech pick, well, you may have noticed that despite its power, Cyber Dark End Dragon does not preclude the usage of fusion substitute monsters. And while regular Cyber Dark Dragon does have to be fusion summoned, Cyber End Dragon's only restriction is that it can't use fusion substitute monsters. So this section is actually twofold. One, use fusion armament to pull Cyber End Dragon right out of the extra deck, and two, run Assault Synchron, special summoning itself from your hand for free alongside any of your level fours, make money Mud Dragon, substituting the Cyber Dark Dragon, and there you go. This even gets Cyber End Dragon into the grave in case you do the regular combo later. Alright, that's all the info I have on Cyber Darks, but how does it stack up against the Nova Scale? Novelty. This was an interesting one to puzzle out, because equipping monsters to other monsters at that point in the game was already design space that was being explored, thanks to Union Monsters. But Cyber Dark kinda does it in reverse. Instead of the Union Monster driving the mechanic, now it's the host monster forcibly grafting itself onto others, even giving them the same kind of protection text that Union Monsters have. Now, both mechanics required a lot of updating to bring them up to code, but despite the blunder, I think a lot of what makes this deck unique ended up being recycled and polished for Dragoonity. It features tons of winged beasts using smaller dragons as equips to fuel their synchro climbing, and because they're dragons, they can be retrofitted onto Cyber Darks for crying out loud. Love them or hate them, Cyber Darks were kinda cooking, even if it was just a little bit. So Cyber Darks get a 3 in novelty. Objectivity. Much like their Cyber Dragon cousins, this deck has strong power plays that can run away with the game if given a chance. But those setups also require a lot of investment and get stonewalled by interruption very easily. But unlike Cydra, Cyber Dark never really had a heyday to look back upon. That being said, their ability to equip cards from the graveyard does open up the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword Lock, a floodgate that is very unfair to a lot of decks, so because of that, I do have to give Cyber Darks a 4 in objectivity. Versatility 
Another reason they lacked the same kind of mass appeal is that they just don't mesh with other decks. They don't have a highly splashable powerful monster and need smaller dragons to function out of the gate, with bigger dragons providing fuel and potential bricks later on. It plays well with Cyber Dragon, but that's like saying that Vision Heroes play well with Elemental Heroes, so this theme gets a 1 in versatility. Awesomeness. Legacy support is difficult because you want to walk this fine line of making the cards worth playing in a more modern context, but don't want to make the old cards obsolete. The whole point is getting to use those nostalgic cards, after all. So you can't make them too powerful, but despite the cool things the new cards enable, I don't think they push the envelope enough. The base Cyberdark design is already clunky, and the new trio of Cannon, Claw, and Chimera do their best to give them worthwhile effects, but if you can't find these new cards, you're stuck playing a deck that's been out of touch for a long, long time. Also, personal nitpick, but Cannon and Claw being dragons does solve a big incongruity with the deck, but they're dragons in name only, kind of removing the theme from the concept of being a parasitic group of machines that latch onto dragons and sap them of their power. Our new bosses are powerful and impactful, but the stumbling blocks are sadly still there, and can make for some truly frustrating plays, so Cyberdarks get a 3 in awesomeness, giving them a total of 11 out of 20 on the Nova scale. And that's all I have to say about Cyberdarks and the Cyber style in general. I've been jonesing to cover them for quite some time, and while the cards never ranked amongst my favorite, like I said at the beginning of the Sydra video, when you share a name with a character and a thing you like, it's hard not to get a little attached. To say nothing of how historic the bloody things are. Uh, thank you all for watching, not just this, but everything. And I can't wait to reach the next big marker for the channel. 75k is going to be Black Wings, and who knows? Maybe we'll do another mini milestone along the way. But in the meantime, I'd like to hear what you all have to say. Do you prefer Cyber Dragons or Cyber Dark? Do you fancy yourself someone who walks the line between light and dark? Do you think Cyber Darks deserve another chance in the spotlight? And of course, which one of them is your favorite? There's a lot of great designs on display here, but honestly, something about Cyber Dark Horn feels iconic. That array of horns is just stellar. Let me know your answers to all of these down below, and of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes, and share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode is brought to you by my patrons, as well as the wonderful people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using the coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commanders, Sir Knight JCB and the Critic of Innocence, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zagedel, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Dark Dragon X830, Emini Chan, Eric, Aaron the Worldbreaker, Frankie, Garland Chaos, Green Knight, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Carp, Mana Charge, Marion Jamesy Picotta, Mega Combi, Millennia Asta, Muzuki Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Red Eyes Jackalow, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Serenity Towns, Sky Buster Leo, That One Dumbass and The Wizard Moose, Cosmic Crusaders Alpha Sly, Almento 5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Beluga Masta, Blitzwolf, Blue Gem, Borger with a Shotgun, Callum McCann, Jazz Ghost, Childish Lamar, Dr. Reaper R.I.P., Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, Ignis Heat, the true Draco Slayer, In Blink, Jester Designs, Jordan Vic, Kale the Dragon, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh, Kim Smiley Face, Lemon Yu Gi Oh, Lord Whoop De Doo, Manga Pages, Marluxia is a Girl, Matt Simmons, Mix Boofy, Michael Shimabukuro, Misty, Nitromo, Shizuki Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Stephen Williamson, Taylor Seymour, The Legendary Raven, and Zal Drekup, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. 
If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits and other awesome perks, it would mean the world to me if you would check out the link to my Patreon in the description or consider joining as a YouTube member. And if you missed out on part one, make sure you get caught up with Cyber Dragon Explained, linked here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye